I'm happy here. We're here with Hopkinton Public Health Director Sean McAuliffe. Sean, thanks for joining us today. My pleasure. And I understand you've been a busy man lately, uh, especially with this triple E threat. Uh, can you talk about the status of the triple E threat here in Hopkinton? Certainly. So in the town of Hopkinton, we're still at um, a critical risk designation. Um, a, because we have one positive mosquito pool that's um, known to have triple E in it. Um, that pool is up um, in the Saddle Hill area. and. The other reason we're in that critical designation is because we've had animal cases and um, one human case um, in our region. Um, and for those reasons, bet between the human case, the positive pool, and then the, um, the weather conditions, the frequent heavy rains, um, that's all contributed to make um, the potential for mosquito exposure. Um, a, a critical risk. And, and I understand you collected a lot of data. Can you tell us about some of that data that you've collected? So we were part of the Central Mass Mosquito Control Project. Um, so there they collect weekly samples and the State Health Department now that we're in a critical risk situation. They also collect um, mosquito samples. We have 12 sampling locations throughout the town. Um, and. I'm able to go in and look at the central masses data on a weekly basis in the states about every two weeks. And what we're seeing is that the mosquito that um, the mosquito population in town that's positive for Tripoli e, um, is that it's about 290 percent more of those mosquitoes than were present um, in 2018 and 2017. So we know that we have a high mosquito population with Tripoli. E. And when we, um, when I was looking at the data the week prior to the aerial spraying, um, out of the 192,000 mosquitoes that were trapped and um, submitted for, um, to the state lab, 162,000 of those were this cattail mosquito. And that's the mosquito that's been identified with Tripoli e in, um, in Hopkinton. And our concern is that we needed to, or the state felt that they needed to reduce that population. And that is really what triggered the state to uh, perform the aerial spraying. So I understand this is something that people should take very seriously. Uh, what are some of the precautions people can take to avoid uh, any case uh, with mosquitoes? And this, this is one of the things that we really wanted to impress upon the population, or just the residents in Hopkinton, is that this is manageable. It's, you know, we know that the mosquitoes are, um, they feed primarily from dusk to dawn. So you want to avoid being outdoors during that prime feeding period. So you, you, if you reduce your exposure, you're less likely to be bitten. Um, if you use uh, mosquito repellent, um, you're less likely to be um, bitten. If you're wearing long sleeves, long pants, when you're outdoors, if you're in that that dusk time, um, wear you know protective clothing like long pants, long shirts, and if we're doing all of these things, we're reducing the risk of getting bitten, and um, we're reducing the risk of getting infected, and it's all something that we have control over. Um, and then, if you're you know if you have other concerns or additional concerns, you, know, you can contact the Central Mass Mosquito Control Project and they can come out and they can spray your yard. Um, I know there have been some questions about whether or not there would be an, another aerial spray. Um, that's highly doubtful because um, I know going into next week, the evening temperatures are likely to be below 60 degrees and that's not an optimal temperature for uh, the mosquitoes to be out at. Um, but you know, we have published on our um, town website, and if you follow our tweets, um, we're constantly providing and pushing documentation out to the public. Um, we just put out a notice last night about the fifth human case that was identified locally. And um, I suspect there'll be one more um, uh, release in the next, if not tonight, if tomorrow. 
um, the word is that there's one more case, a uh, human case that's to be reported um, in the region. And unfortunately, from what I understand, this is a threat that could be around perhaps a couple of summers? Yes, I mean, for this, this year, um, the, the risk will be present until we have a, uh, a killing frost. Um, last year that didn't occur, I don't believe, until after Halloween. So we need to take you know, some personal responsibility and precautions to protect ourselves, again, from dusk to dawn. Um, and we'll be meeting with the state to review you know, whether or not last year counted as a, uh, a bad year. Um, right now, based on the data I've reviewed, um, it's not. Typically, these events occur in two-year cycles. Um, so uh, we could have a problem next year. Um, but um, again, we'll be applying the same, um, the knowledge we learned from this year um, and improving communication, et cetera, to address the problem if it does occur next year. Well, certainly a lot of local events were uh, moved from the evening hours because of this threat, such as the Hopkinton Day and many of the uh, sporting events uh, in town. Uh, could you talk about uh, what some of the next steps uh, are going to be to try to fight this Triple E problem? Well, I mean, the, the rescheduling, it, it's just, again, part of those per, uh, personal protective uh, measures that we can take. We, we didn't feel that it was prudent to have um, you know, these events go into and beyond the dusk hours. It, it just wasn't worth the risk. It wasn't advised by the state. So, um, you know, in speaking with the school um, and then speaking with the schools in the region, we realized that we were all in the same boat and it made, you know, practical sense to eliminate or reduce the risk to the students um, by changing the event times. Um, and it's the same thing that occurred with, um, you know, when we sat down with uh, the representatives from the Friends of Hopkinton that run Family Day, um, they took the step and realized that it wasn't worth the risk to uh, the residents who would be attending Family Day to be exposed to mosquitoes, um, you know, after dawn, you know, and, and, and then the volunteers would be working, setting up the fireworks and the lighting. So, um, again, we're, we're stressing the need to take those personal precautions and pers you know, those preventative measures um, to avoid mosquito contact. And is there going to be any more spraying going on in the area that you know of? Like I said, we, we don't believe there'll be aerial spraying um, because the mosquitoes are, shouldn't be active um, it, it, during the overnight hours. So right. that doesn't make a lot of sense. But we still have the Central Mass Mosquito Control uh, Project um, that'll be working in the area and people can contact um, the project and schedule um, home spraying, or they can do it by neighborhood. Um, and then if, if there are other threats that we see in town, um, we have the ability, working with the state, the project, and the health department to mobilize them to treat high-risk areas. And, um, and that's something that we'll be looking at through the weekend and into next week. All right, and also uh, another thing that you've been busy with, and you've been a very busy man lately, uh, there was a blue-green algae uh, found in some of the local lakes. Uh, you, uh, you may have seen it on the news. Uh, can you tell us about that uh, blue-green algae that was found in the lakes, and uh, is it dangerous? Yes, so we have, um, so cyanobacteria, which is a blue-green algae, um, was identified in the, the bathing beach area at Hopkinton State Park. Um, they, so the DCR notified the state health department. They came out, sampled it, confirmed that the toxin levels were high enough to warrant um, closing the closing that area. And when they when the state closes, like the bathing beach, it includes the entire um, lake body. So they're coming out on a weekly basis, sampling that beach area to see if the toxin levels have been reduced to a um, a reasonable and safe um, concentration. Um, so until we receive word from the state, um, you know, I wouldn't advise anybody to bring, you know, their pets um, in the area, and the area is already uh, cordoned off to prevent uh, swimming. And this week there was supposed to be a triathlon there, and they've uh, canceled the swimming event. 
or the swimming component to that event. Um, and if, you know, if residents see any suspect or odd green or blue bacteria or uh, discoloration in Whitehall and Maspinock, we encourage them to contact the health department because we can go out, um, take a look, obtain photos. We can contact uh, limnologists in the area who can make those determinations that it is or is not um, a blue, uh, toxic blue-green algae that then would get forwarded to the state and then the state would send someone out to test it to confirm it. But right now, um, we're going out on a weekly basis to look at the lakes. I'm actually leaving here to go look at a, uh, an area um, that I'm fairly certain isn't a blue-green algae that we need to be concerned with. But nonetheless, I want to go out and get those, uh, the, the, the field sampling and the photographs so I can provide that to the state for uh, a determination. So as of right now, you, you wouldn't recommend swimming in the lakes at this current moment? Um, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't do anything at Hopkinton State Park until we know for sure. Um, I don't have any data at this moment that would suggest that uh, there's a problem um, at Maspinock or at uh, Whitehall. And again, um, if anybody sees anything that they're concerned with, um, we encourage people to contact us. So those bodies, um, I'd, I'd regard as safe. But again, it, it, this is an opportunity to take control over the risk. If you're a, if you're concerned, don't let your pets go into the water body. Um, bring an extra water bottle for the for your pets. Keep them on leash. Um, and if you're doing that, just like if you're applying repellent and wearing protective clothing, um, you're reducing your risk. You're reducing the risk to your animal, and that's what we want to. You know, we need to take you know some personal responsibility to uh, keep ourselves and our pets safe right now. Is there any idea when the, uh, we will receive word from the state about this? Um, they um, in touch with them on a weekly basis on on the cyanobacteria level of uh, those concentrations and they said that they would give me a call um, as soon as they uh, get a negative test um, and um, and then again you know for the other water bodies the the risk of algal blooms is going down as it's getting colder and the uh, the sun intensity is um, reducing but um, if anybody's concerned I encourage them to call the health department all right, well, we know you're busy. We thank you so much for joining us and talking about these uh, very important topics with us today. Thank you for having me, and again, feel free to call us at any time. All right, All right. there you have it, Sean McAuliffe, Public Health Director of Hopkinton.